much. Uh, on our agenda, we're going to move to item number seven, the presentation, and I'll turn it over to, uh, to Dr. Johnson. We'll turn it over to you, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. In honor of March being Arts in Our Schools Month, we thought it was very fitting to have students from our Paul Robeson Community School for the Arts students share their passion for the arts with us. In their art courses at PRCA, students are exploring the four artistic processes in all art forms. Students perform by expressing their creative thoughts, respond to artistic ideas, connect them to their own lives, and create new work reflective of their perspectives. Tonight, we will have performances by our orchestra, choir, and band students, our student presenter, presenters, Danalise Jacquez and Derek Hughes Jr. will be telling us about each piece shortly. Please also notice the video of our visual art artists playing in the background. Enjoy. Hello, board of directors, family, and friends. Paul Robeson Community School for the Arts is excited to be here with you tonight to highlight some of our amazing young artists. In honor of Arts in Our School Month, we take pride in recognizing the importance of arts in our community, but most importantly, in our schools. I'm Demelise Jacquez, a fifth grade student at PRCA and a proud member of the Robeson Players. Performing Arts Club advised by Mr. Smalls. You might remember me from my breakout role as Rafiki in our first theater production of The Lion King Jr. in spring of 2022. That was an exciting time for me as well as everyone else involved. This year I have a starring role as Asaka, Mother of the Earth, in the junior production Once on this Island. I'm Derek Hughes Jr., a fifth grade student at PRCA. I too am a part of Robeson Players Performance Art Club. I played the older Simba in The Lion King Jr. This year, I star alongside Danielise at Papageddon, Sly Demon of Death, a god who will stop at nothing to get what he wants. Once on this island uh, is a story about a girl named Timun who was plucked from the flood during a terrible storm by the god of water, Agwe. Sheltered in a tree by Asaka, mother of the earth, and sent on a journey by the gods, a journey that will test the strength of love against the power of death on this island of two different worlds. We tell the this story. story. As we entertain you tonight, we want to remind you of all the dedication and continuation of hard work by both the students and teachers of the arts department. Tonight you will see performances from our very own orchestra, chorus, and band. Please do not forget to pay attention to the slideshow from our arts department. Special thanks to Ms. Morales and Mr. Lee.
Danielise, tonight everyone is in for a real treat. That's right, Darren. Without further ado, please welcome the PRCA Wind Orchestra, directed by Mr. Pluskanka. This group is comprised of students in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade that have been rehearsing during their wind period. Tonight they will be playing a piece, Gap of Dunlow, by Chris Thomas. This piece includes many styles of music that one may hear walking around an Irish countryside. Next, we would like to welcome our PRCA chorus under the direction of Ms. Camiola. This group of singers are made up of 6th and 7th grade students and will be performing the song Namaste by Joanna Hamill. In this song, we learn how to say hello and other greetings in many different languages.
beautiful voices and great performance. And now for our final piece for the evening, please welcome the PRCA Academy Concert Band under the direction of Mr. Johnson. This group of musicians is comprised of select seventh and eighth grade students that demonstrate our highest level of achievement in winds and percussion. Tonight they will be performing an arrangement entitled African Alleluia, based on a Kenyan folk song, Wana Baraka, by John O'Reilly. to all those artists who shared their gifts with us this evening. Be sure to check out our show, What's on This Island, Junior. Performances are 8, June 8th and 9th, 6 to 8 p.m. Tickets go on sale soon. Let's not forget, Thursday, March 30th is our first ever PRCA and Community Arts Night from 5 to 7 p.m. We invite all members of our community to attend and support the arts. And with that, we say, keep the arts alive and have a great night. back up I just want to as the students are leaving just congratulate them it's just it's, it's nice like this that remind us how special our students are how talented they are 
how they are going to change the world. And so uh, uh, our narrators were extraordinary. The diversity, and basically every, every, every part of the globe was talked about in the, that music. And I love it. We just have a beautiful world. And I, I feel really positive about our future, about our, our young people, what they're going to do. They're going to bring people together. They're going to, to not have the conflict that, that we have so much in our world today. So let's give them all one more round of applause. Great way to begin uh, begin the meeting. Now, uh, Mr. Janarenko. Rich, we uh, will move on to the uh, uh, presentation, public hearing on the budget. Thank you, Dr. Call. Turn it over to you. So tonight, I have for the board and the public, I uh, present to you the 2023-2024 school budget. The budget totals $285,800,000. That's inclusive of all funds and grants. That's uh, approximately a $9.4 million increase above this year's budget. Excuse me. And that's primarily due to the $11.3 million increase in state aid that we received. The budget is a tax increase of $66.99 a year. So it's less than $6 a month for the average value of home in New Brunswick. And it has 42 new positions in the budget. 21 of those are dedicated to the new Blanquita Valente School. And all of those positions are teaching positions or instructional positions, I should say. And we're going to continue to replace the HVA systems in several schools and playgrounds and fields across the district in order to improve our facilities. Um, the, the, the priorities of the budget are closing the achievement gap, uh, expanding our summer school and after school programs, and recruiting and retaining essential hard to fill positions, uh, professional development, and facility upgrades. I'm going to skip the instructional priorities and I'm going to go right to the breakdown of the budget and the costs in terms of what is in the budget and how much it each increase is. So the salaries and benefits, so the, the budget breakdown of cost is $269,706,000. That is the general fund budget, which is $246 million, and the $26 million early childhood program. Okay, so this breakdown of budgeted costs does not include ESSER funding and other grants like Title I type of things. So out of that $269 million, $172 is salaries and benefits of the staff of the district. And you can see the breakdown of the rest of the costs. Another uh, amount of money we spent, spent about $11 million on transportation. Another $11 million maintaining the schools. About uh, $16.4 million on students to go to added district schools. And you see the other budget breakdown of costs. I won't go through them all. And then the next page is the dollar amount increases. Right, so salaries and benefits are increasing 8.6%. That includes all raises for current staff, 42 new positions, and uh, benefit increases around uh, 8%. Uh, you can see that we've, we've, there is one thing in this budget I'd like to point out with the uh, transition from IEP running the Technology High School to the school district uh, staffing it. That's why you see the other expenses category go down dramatically and part of those monies are in the salaries and benefits increase also. So in a, in a, that is the, and, the, and finally the amount of money to be raised from the city of New Brunswick residents for this budget is 
$300,000 and we receive $186 million in state aid. Any questions from the board? I certainly would say that I mean, a lot of work goes into this budget. A lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of work in Trenton, a lot of work uh, throughout the state. It is very much more complex than what you hear, you know, from, from Rich, every detail. And we, we make, obviously, salaries for, uh, for, for teachers and staff a priority, and that's gone up, and so um, it's, a, it's a very solid budget. Any other comments? At, and I will say, as you, as you pointed out, the, the full budget, and we will post the user-friendly budget online and on our website, and this package is on our website, but the full budget is like 180-something pages, so yeah. it is quite a, a lengthy document for very, sure. Very comprehensive. Do we take both resolutions? Shall we take both resolutions now? Sure, we can take both resolutions. Um, I did not put out a sign sheet, but is there anyone from the public who'd like to have a comment or a question on the school budget? Any comments, questions? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to accept resolution A and B on the school budget? We have put, yes. Craddleville, New Brunswick, New Brunswick today. I wanted to ask about the uh, 40 Van Dyke you know, building and what the district plans to do with it next year. Is it true that there'll be other grade levels moving into it? And how does that impact the other schools and, and the budgeting? What is, what is the question? The, uh, I call it the warehouse school, the 40 Van Dyke, Building 40, Swing Space, Pathways Campus. There'll be no impact on the budget. The only budget we may have to uh, hire additional teachers to support the program that we are planning for, uh, 40 Van Dyke that we call the Pathway Campus. Um, so right now we don't see any type of substantial impact on the budget at all. Okay, and could you just tell me what the program is, because I'm not... I believe I during the reports of facilities, they will discuss what the plan would be. So you can follow okay. up your question in the second part. This is too specific to the budget. This I budget. Thank you. Budget only. Any other comments, questions? Is there a motion to accept? Sorry. Resolutions A and B. Second. Second. Roll call, Mr. General. Mr. Adorno. Yes. Mrs. Medina Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Mr. Spencer, Ms. Sevilla, yes. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. Motion approved. Wonderful. Thank you uh, very much. We'll move on to the minutes, the February 28, 2023 monthly board meeting minutes and the March 7th preliminary budget meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. There a second? Yes. Roll call, Mr. General. Mr. Adorno. Yes. Mrs. Medina Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Yes. Mr. Spencer. Yes. Ms. Sevilla. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. Motion approved. Moving on to item number nine, the superintendent's report. Dr. What? Oh, you have, okay. Do you want to? Okay. Go ahead. So we'll have the 2023 CUSAC equivalency application proposal. Change the slides. We're ready for the 2023 equivalence and NJQ SAC equivalency proposal presentation. Thank 
you. Good evening. NJ Cusack, New Jersey Quality Single Accountability Continuum is a state evaluation model to ensure that school districts are providing a thorough and efficient education for all students. Tonight I will be presenting the 2023 Cusack Equivalency Application Proposal. While measuring student proficiency in English language arts, mathematics, and science continues to be an important requirement for federal accountability, the New Jersey Department of Education believes that student progress should also be measured and reported as continuous growth toward proficiency for all students, which are indicators number four and number five in one of the five district performance review DPR areas of the model known as instruction and program that I will be presenting tonight. The New Jersey Department of Education is allowing, can we go to the previous slide? Thank you. The New Jersey Department of Education is allowing districts the opportunity to apply for an equivalency to increase growth scores for English language arts and mathematics as a request to substitute instruction and program DPR indicators four and five, which utilize data from 2018-2019 state assessments. The utilization of this data from three years ago compared to last year, 2021-2022, spring NJSLA in mathematics and English language arts administration misrepresents the current state of academic progress in our district and are not reflective of our current population and growth. The district, New Brunswick Public Schools, is requesting permission to replace QSAC instruction and program indicators four and five with current data more reflective of our practices, the district will utilize the 2020-2021 and 2021-2022 common assessment data for English language arts and mathematics to demonstrate growth. So what you have here currently in front of you are 2018-2019 growth data report. And it's measured by the MSGP, which is the median student growth percentile. You see here all the different sub student subgroups that are reported. And then the English language arts district's median compared to the statewide median. And then it determines whether we as a district met the standard. In ELA, you can see that we met the standard for all of our subgroups. In mathematics, we have the same data aligned to each of the student groups. We have our district median math data compared to our statewide median math data. In mathematics, in 2018, 2019, before the pandemic, we did not meet the standard for the black or African American subgroup. Can we go to the last slide, please? Before, thank you. Yes, perfect. This is the data that we will be submitting with this proposal and application process to demonstrate current growth due to our current practices aligned to our New Jersey student learning standards in mathematics and English language arts. As you can see here, we have modeled the same data compared to what the state performance reports show. We have our student groups on the left, and then we have our ELA common assessments for ELA 2020-2021 compared to 2021-22. In English language arts, 
we see that we were able to meet the standard when we compare 2021 to 2122. In mathematics, we are also comparing our district median data and common assessments from 2021 to 2122. Here we also see in all of the subgroup areas that we were able to meet standard when comparing two years of growth aligned to the New Jersey student learning standards for mathematics and English language arts. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for that comprehensive uh, report. And it really puts the data in, in perspective. So moving on to item number nine, the superintendent's report, Dr. Aubrey Johnson. Yes, thank you, Dr. Corbo. Well, first off, I do want to echo your, your comments regarding the performance today. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it just feels really good to watch our students perform, but I also just want the board to realize, you know, a few years ago, the board had requested um, that we, the team and I, um, revitalize the arts at Paul Robeson, and I hope today showed um, that the arts is coming alive. I know we still have more work to do, but it was a request of the board about three or four years ago that we revitalize the arts of Paul Robeson. So I just want to, I feel really, really good to hear what I, you know, to hear tonight and see the hard work that the teachers, the students, and uh, Ms. 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 Robinson, the principal, has done. Um, and we will continue to, to, to provide these experiences for our students and to know that they actually are ahead and have um, the skill set to be prepared for high school shows the work that we must continue to do in our middle school grades to prepare students. So I feel good. I hope you feel good, but I know we will always strive for the best. Some of the remarks I would like to say today, uh, as, as many of you are aware, this month we have engaged in the celebration of Women Histories Month. While we in New Brunswick Public Schools have been imparting this profoundly important perspective to our students, I encourage our entire school community, inclusive of our parents, our families, our educators, to also spend time considering how women have shaped our community, our country, and our world. It's an awareness to be embraced and cherished and perhaps the most essential lesson of Women's History Month is that each of us has been profoundly influenced by the immeasurable contributions women made and continue to make to the story of humankind. And notice I didn't say mankind, to humankind. Also, this month or in the, between March 5th and 11th, um, we celebrated School Social Work Week. This year theme was We Rise. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the critical role of our school social workers who continuously support the mental health and overall wellness of our entire school community. We thank them for their hard work and their dedication as they are instrumental in creating a positive and inclusive school culture to support the emotional well-being and academic success of our students. Let's continue to rise up and support one another as we continue to work diligently on making a difference in the lives of our students and school community. And as, again, Dr. Kobo, as we see the world that we're living in, we know this is of utmost appointment and should be a number one national priority. Again, I just want to say thank you to us, to the service of our school social workers, and not only our school social workers, our teachers, our principals, our board members, everyone in the community that are, is doing this work. Also, you know, sometimes when you come to a board meeting, you turn on the news sometimes, and I was shocked to see School 12 representing an event that happened. Uh, could I say School 12? Channel 12. Uh, representing an um, event that happened today at uh, Paul Robeson. You know, I'm pleased to note that our Save the Promise Club hosted a very impressive event earlier today at Paul Robeson Community School. Save clubs from other school districts visited Paul Robeson today um, and joined us in a day-long leadership session focused on addressing the threat of violence in our communities. 
This was really an excellent opportunity for our students since the SAFE clubs are an integral, an integral part of the nationally known Sandy Hook Promise Organization. And by the way, SAVE stands for Students Against Violence Everywhere. And it was really great to see different communities, different students with different perspectives from other school districts just sit today in dialogue on what they believe is important. And as I noted, sometimes as adults, we believe that we have the answers when, it's, when we need to pause and listen to the suggestions of our young minds and, and implement the strategies that they suggest. And it was great just to stand around and listen to them uh, today. On Saturday, March 11th, through our continued partnership with the New Jersey Black Women Physician Association, New Brunswick Tomorrow, and Middlesex County Health Department, we hosted another vaccine flu clinic at Retro School. First doses, second doses, and boosters were available to students, parents, and staff. Flu vaccines and less screening were also available. In total, we administered 19 COVID vaccines and seven flu vaccines and two lead screenings were done. 18 individuals who received the COVID vaccine received a $25 gift card. And we want to thank all of our community partners, testing labs, and pharmacies who, pharmacies who partnered with the district to make testing and vaccination available to our staff and families. Our next COVID vaccine clinic is scheduled for Saturday, April 22nd. The district has hosted its second in-person job fair on Thursday, March 16th. Our last job fair is scheduled for Thursday, May 4th for all district positions. To date, the district has attended four college education fairs and is registered to attend four additional out-of-district job fairs. Again, thank you to our administrators for their consistent support in recruiting and hiring during our job fairs. And please, anyone who's interested in the position, visit our district social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and the district website for more information. And during last month's uh, board meeting, I shared my plans to establish an all-in for New Brunswick Task Force to, to discuss current challenges impacting our children and to develop potential solutions primarily directed toward our middle and high school students. I've had the pleasure this past week uh, of sharing this perspective with many um, community and civic leaders, educators, some parents, and students who have agreed to be part of this task force. And we will begin meeting in the coming months, and I truly believe the work of this task force will have a positive impact on our students. And to close, I just would like to provide you um, some of our um, numbers for the month of March 23rd. We've enrolled 9,538 students. Uh, there were 13 cases of harassment, intimidation, and bullying. There were 132 suspensions. Our staff attendance was at 93.5%, and our student attendance was at 91%. We had 43 uh, positive cases for employees and 33 positive COVID cases for students. That concludes my remarks. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Is there a motion to accept the superintendent's report? So moved. Is there a second? Roll call, please, Mr. General. Mr. Dorn, yes. Mrs. Medina Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Yes. Mrs. Spencer. Yes. Mrs. Varela. Yes. Mrs. Sevilla. Yes. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. Motion approved. Great. Thank you again for that report. We'll move on to item number 10, the student representative report. David Aragon. Welcome, David. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, spring sports have begun with over 400 students signing up for a sport. At the middle school, we have tennis, track and field, baseball, softball, and boys volleyball. At the high school, we have all the same, but also including boys and girls golf, and for the first time in school history, girls flag football. Practices, <coughs> practices began two weeks ago, and opening day for games will be Monday, April 3rd. The New Brunswick High School Honor Roll celebration took place on March 10th during the last period of the day. Students were recognized with certificates and desserts as hundreds of students made honor roll during marking period two. NBHS held a day of understanding gallery walk, highlighting spectacular artwork created by New Brunswick High School students that focused on artistic expression of mental health. 
And lastly, New Brunswick High School theater students performed an amazing rendition of the play Love Sick, a romantic comedy that included 10 short plays that focused on the humor, pain, and joy that comes with being in love. Special thanks to our, te our theater teachers, Stephen Thornburg and Christy Keller, for directing this wonderful production. And that concludes my, my report. Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for that report. Appreciate it. We'll move on to item number 11, the Facilities Committee report. Mr. Edward Spencer. The Facility Committee met on March the 8th. We discussed the status of the McKinley Gymnasium HVAC project. <clears throat> the bids were within the project budget, and tonight we are recommending awarding the project to the low bidder, All Coast Services, Inc., for $918,170. We will update you as we move forward. As we plan for the opening of the Blanquita Valente School, Community School in September, we've informed all families of students in grades K to eight who are projected to attend that school in 2023 through 2024 school year. With the current Lincoln Attic students vacating the Pathways campus at the end of this school year, our plan is to use that facility to house our new Pathways Middle School program for rising sixth grade students leaving Lord Sterling Community School and Roosevelt Elementary School for the 2023 through 2024 school year. The new Blanquita B. Valente Community School, Atlantic Engineering is continuing to provide quality control testing and inspection services for brick and mortar work. They are also concluding the last concrete inspection related to the construction of the loading dock. All steel inspections are completed. Approximately 80% of the windows are now place, in place. Approximately 90% of the interior wall framing is completed and 80% of the gym Gypsum wallboard has been installed. Installation of the grid of the coastal, uh, coastal tile ceilings was, has started. Electrical and plumbing work is progressing on schedule. Temporary heating continues as necessary to allow painting and bathroom tile work to progress. The installation of the boiler, boilers has been completed. We have paid $33.4 million to date. We're expected, <clears throat> expecting the March 2023 invoice to be approximately $3.3 million, which will put us at total date of $36.4 million. We remain on schedule for a completion date of August 2023. That, Mr. President, concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Very, very exciting. I can't wait for the opening of that building. I know it's going to be uh, amazing, state of the art, and um, um, it will help to, to increase the quality of education we're providing our students. So thank you for keeping us on top of that. Moving, moving on to item number 12, the Athletic Committee report. I guess uh, Ivan. Oh, 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 you're here. Good. We'll see you. Patricia. Good evening, everyone. Tonight there isn't an athletic committee report, but I do need a bank reconciliation for the month of February. Okay, is there a motion to accept? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Mr. General. Mr. Adorno. Yes. Mrs. Regina Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Yes. Mr. Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Adorno. Yes. Mrs. Varela. Yes. Mrs. Villa. Yes. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. Motion approved. Moving on to item number 13, the Curriculum Policy Committee report. Mrs. Imra L. Seawood, chairperson. Members of the board, we had a brief meeting this month 
but we're able to um, have one presentation. Um, Mrs. Hill presented uh, at the meeting, and um, I believe we need a resolution to accept that report. Some updates we reviewed, we reviewed. March 23rd was observed as a day of understanding. We celebrated a day of understanding with multiple exhibits on display district-wide, showcasing student artwork on food and equity, mental health, women's health, gender norm stereotypes, and violence prevention, as well as portrayals of positive relationships, gender equity, and mental health support. During the meeting, we reviewed the resolutions and we recommend their approval by the full board this evening. We have one policy <coughs> this month. Uh, it's a mandated policy regarding prevention and treatment of sports-related concussions and head injuries. It's been revised to address the revisions which expanded the scope of the law to include intramural sports along with interscholastic sports and cheerleading programs. In addition, the new law requires school districts implement the graduated six-step return to competition process developed by the CDC. Return to play progression recommendations. In the regulation references, the New Jersey Department of Ed concussion and head injury fact sheet and parent guardian acknowledgement form we already had in place. So these are state mandated revisions to existing policy and we recommend their approval on the first reading. That concludes our report. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Seawood, uh, for that report. Uh, we'll move on to item number 14. And, um, I had mentioned before that the, um, the superintendent, Mark Finkelstein, who was president of this board for 10 years, will be retiring June 7th and will be a, uh, really be a wonderful um, celebration of his um, incredible legacy at the Pines Manor. Um, I encourage uh, those of you that knew Mark and, and, and know how special he is to, uh, to attend. Just to say a little bit about uh, what he's done in his 30 plus years of being at the Educational Services Commission, which is the largest special needs district in the, the, the state, of, uh, state of New Jersey, that uh, when he started, there was, and this, this organization receives no state money. He started, the budget was $20 million. Our budget now is $173 million. We actually have record enrollment. And so we like to say that people vote with their feet, that they come to the commission and the districts pay for the services. And if the services aren't good, then the districts aren't going to come. But this organization was just Middlesex County, and then we moved it to the region, and now it's statewide. But it's gone beyond that. And so now it has the largest buying group that almost every municipality and every school district is a member of the cooperative purchasing program. Now, and I don't know if folks know this, we're now in five other states. So actually New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, uh, I think Virginia, and uh, uh, one other is Maryland, perhaps, and so it's really grown. And under Mark's leadership, he's just done an amazing job. And so to, to really celebrate um, celebrate him, it's going to be a fantastic, uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic evening. And so uh, that will be my report for the ESCNJ. Oh, I, I will say uh, his successor, actually, tomorrow I'll, I'll be on the team to interview 
uh, the, 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 the several candidates to be the next superintendent of the Educational Services Commission of New Jersey. They have some big shoes to fill. So, um, so that should be very, very interesting. Uh, we'll move on to item number 15, the public comments. Mr. Janerone, I think there are four people who have signed up. Uh, we actually have five, Dr. Proctor. Five people? Okay. Yeah, the first one is Tracy O'Reggio Wark. Ms. Wark, welcome. You sign in and state your name and address if you could. Hi, I'm Tracy O'Reggio Clark uh, from New Brunswick Cultural Center. Uh, New I was to, we just want to take a moment to say thank you to New Brunswick Public Schools Administration. Um, I'm also co-founder of Windows of Understanding, a social justice public art exhibit on display from January 16th, MLK Day through April 1st, that we've spoken about earlier today. Um, the vision for this public art project is to transform our main street spaces into literal windows of understanding, spaces in which the community can learn about the positive strides being made by local organizations around a wide array of social justice issues that do not make the daily headlines. This is a creative community built in response to negativity and hate being perpetuated in today's media landscape. I believe that through visual language, artists can communicate methods of understanding in powerful ways that cut across cultural boundaries. I say all the above because we have partnered with the New Brunswick Schools from the inception of this important initiative. The certain consistent issues that are discussed and visually interpreted are food equity, mental health, and violence prevention, which was also mentioned earlier today. Uh, we worked with the New Brunswick High School and No School Art Clubs, then incorporated the National Art Honor Society. And this year, the district presented its second, now annual, day of understanding where all the schools, from elementary to the high schools, participated in creating artwork around these challenging issues. The most, in each and every year, the students always bring the clearest message, the most honest message. And it's very clear to us that the students are listening, internalizing and coping through current events, through family issues, and even trauma. Very grateful to the district under the leadership of Dr. Johnson and his staff, Mrs. Hill, Mr. Renia, Ms. Starla, your principals, your teachers, for giving us this opportunity to bring Windows of Understanding into the art clubs, into the humanities and civic engagement classes. Most importantly, we're so grateful to the students for giving us the opportunity to hear their most authentic voices visually. I'd like to leave you with a short sentiment. We just celebrated Holy, a traditional Asian Indian custom to welcome spring and new beginnings. We partnered with the New Brunswick Free Public Library and with the help from Rebecca Zeladon, who helped us coordinate student volunteers. We asked for 10 volunteers and 30, 37 signed up. Out of that 37, 36 showed. The students stayed with us the entire time, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., six hours. Please remember the weather on Saturday. It was raining, it was cold, it was windy. The students set up tents, monitored the children's areas, got their face painted, sampled and took home food, broke down tables, and set up stage scenery and participated in color play. We could not have executed this event without their help. As Vice President Sabia says all the time, give a young person a purpose and the possibilities are endless. Many of the students had not been to Holy before and tried Asian Indian food, but they were all open. Well, your students re energize us every day to the point we have tripled our schedule of events to welcome your students to come and engage directly with everyone in all our communities that span the arts, culture, and government. Thanks again for the opportunity to share our gratitude and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for that wonderful statement and all that you do in New Brunswick. You know, I, you know, I know known you for years and so just just thank you for the positivity that you bring and the energy that you bring to to this community we, we need more and more more of that thank so you. thank you very thank much you. thank you to sarah too that's with us as well thank you very much uh, mr general yes uh linda stork
were mentioned by the President last week. It specifically says to provide a platform for the public and the parents to express their concerns and their opinions. And that was not made clear last time. Um, uh, people were not made to feel welcome. I felt very badly to be cut off when I needed only a couple seconds to finish a sentence um, and, and accused of being selfish and I don't know what else. But the point is that um, later on, when people who were being, uh, let's say, highly uh, complimentary of the board needed time to finish, that was granted. It wasn't even pointed out to them that they were over time. So it just seems to be a discrepancy in how different people are treated. I'm also curious to know um, from the facilities report, will the PTEC Building 40 will be a P-TECH middle school or just a regular middle school? It sounded like all the students coming out of sixth grade at Roosevelt and another school will go there. So it's just a middle school, right? You're asking if it's just going to be a, a, a regular middle school? Right. Because it sounded like all the students coming out of sixth grade at two of our existing schools will go there for middle school. No, that's not accurate. Um, the P-TECH that's currently at the swing space, I mean, excuse me, at 40 Van Dyke, um, will remain there. So they do utilize three, about a quarter of the building, a little more than a quarter. Um, all the students that are currently in the building that will be um, enrolled in Blanquita, Valente, um, that space, once they enroll, we will be bringing over our current fifth graders that are Lord Sterling and Roosevelt to Fort Van Dyke, the Pathway Campus, as sixth graders. So no, not all the sixth graders exist. It's, it's the reverse, if I understood your, co your question. Right, it's, it's a regular middle school. It's not a, a path, P-TECH school. It is a regular middle school. Yes. That's what I said. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it sounded like. I wasn't sure because it was also mentioned as a P-TECH middle school and I was... Where did that come Yeah, yeah. The, the, any, any other comments? Questions? That will be all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Uh, Mr. General, who's next? Mr. Crowder. Good evening once again, Charlie Craddaville, New Brunswick today. Um, so those students who go to Lord Sterling and Roosevelt right now are my neighbors. And uh, under the, correct me if I'm wrong, but under the current arrangement, if nothing changed, they would attend New Brunswick Middle School, right? That's correct. Okay. But you're planning to redirect them to the warehouse school for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade? Is that the plan? There is no warehouse school. Mr. Crowdville. It's called the Pathway School, so please address it as its name. I'll, I'll, I'll speak how I choose to speak, but I'm, I do, whatever you want to call it, that's where they're right. going for not just sixth, but seventh and eighth. Yeah, there, there's no comment. No comment. You won't comment on that. Okay. So, what is the reason for this? How badly is New Brunswick Middle School overcrowded? Yeah. yeah give, give us all your questions, and we'll take them at the end of your comments. Okay, is there a long-term plan to address the overcrowding, or are you just going to send these young students to the warehouse school indefinitely? If you ask me, I think we need a new middle school in the community, not to send the students from the community to a warehouse in the industrial section of town. Can I get a response on that? No comment, Mr. Clatterville. Okay. I will say it was great to see the talented students and their performances. Um, folks will be able to watch that on the New Brunswick Today YouTube channel because I came here and recorded it and I'll post the video and I hope people enjoy it. I will note it'd be a lot better and more appropriate for the district to record your own meetings. Share the recordings yourself 
The board is out of step with most other boards because of your policies about public comment, your lack of meeting recordings, and your lack of remote <coughs> access options. On March 16th, one man was injured in a shooting on Lee Avenue right near two of the elementary schools. Is it true the alleged shooter entered one of the schools after the shooting? No, no comment. Really? Well, as uh, Linda mentioned, you seem to suggest this is not the place to raise issues and that people should work things out behind the scenes. I asked the superintendent about this incident and he didn't even give me the courtesy of a response. So now I'm here to ask, and you won't even give a substantive response as to whether or not an alleged shooter entered one of the schools? How can parents feel May safe? May I respond? Yes, please, please respond. And I just want to make for the record, the comment of no comment usually is when there's a question for me that's just ludicrous from the platform. And um, I don't want to fall into some of the games that are playing, but if that was the case, the community would have been notified as well as the parents. Okay, so I do not respond to emails that are provocative in nature. That does not make sense to me, but I do, I do appreciate, I do understand that you may have received the misinformation, so I'll just clear it up right now and say that that is absolutely false. Thank you. I reached out to check my facts, so I, I wasn't provocative. I was it wasn't a fact. It. Okay, so David Holmes was incarcerated after pleading guilty to endangering the welfare of a child. What do you have to say to the victim and to no parents who are on, concerned on, 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 about on, on, the safety of their children? We, we, the, the, you, we don't make comments on, on, uh, on that. And so, uh, thank you, Mr. Cranville. You won't reassure your the time. parents after one of your employees was convicted of endangering the welfare of a child. You won't make a comment on, on to reassure the parents Mr. that Cranville, their children are safe. We'll make a we'll make a, a comment. Not at this time. Thank you for when your time. When will you make the comment? Thank you so much for your time. When will you make the comment? M Mr. General. He's, he's in jail now. You're still not going to comment. Mr. General. You deserve better. Who's next? April Nicholas. Good evening, Ms. Nicholas. gets added to the consent agenda? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, if you could speak up, but, but uh, could you explain, Mr. General, the process that an item is added to our consent agenda? That's a, that's a reasonable question. We have several committees of the board, and they meet, and for example, the curriculum committee, and any items and resolutions that need board approval, come from schools or are developed by central administration and those resolutions are presented to the curriculum committee. We have resolutions sometimes to the facilities committee or people present resolutions to my office and we form the agenda for board approval. Okay. Um, I'm asking that specifically to try and understand uh, what happened at the last meeting with an item that was tabled from the agenda after outcry that would have allowed uh, the school teachers who would be teaching students about sexual education to be trained by a program masquerading as a, a health organization and as a qualified organization, which in fact is uh, was an organization that's been, uh, the type of organization that's been flagged by the State Attorney General of New Jersey as a threat to the public um, because of its uh, inaccurate health information that it provides. That was something that was thankfully caught by many members of the public who were very upset to see that that was on the consent agenda, ready to be approved by the board to mistrain the public school teachers. And I'm trying to understand how was that allowed to happen? How did that really aggressively terrible proposal get added to the consent agenda? Can you tell me which committee approved that? 
we won't comment on this, but we actually pulled it well before we heard anything from the community. This was pulled by the board after doing some additional research. Sometimes things get on the consent agenda, then we do additional research and find out that there, there, there are issues with them or they don't make sense, and sometimes we add things to the agenda afterwards that are particularly pertinent for that particular meeting. So it's not a, it's not a, a, a linear process, it's a process where we evaluate uh, every item and we double check and we triple check when necessary. So that's, that's why it was taken, not because people from the community found something that we didn't find. Well, I will point out that that's a very different narrative than what you presented at the last meeting. At the last meeting, the first thing that you said before you even began the meeting was to thank members of the public for pointing out that error because that is what prompted you to do that additional research and decide to table that item. Uh, well, what I would thank them again for that. Yes, absolutely. But we didn't say that was the reason we did it. That, that is what you said. No, 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 that wasn't the only reason that we did it. Other, other members of the board had already identified that before. But one of the things that we want but, to but thank the, people for that. But the committee that. that reviewed it did not identify any issue with that proposal and recommended it to be added to the consent agenda. Is that, are you confirming that? That no one from the public added, added to the consent agenda? No, they didn't. No, what I'm asking you for confirmation is that whatever committee reviewed that proposal seem to find no issue with that proposal and recommended it. To be honest, I honestly don't know exactly what, you know, what, what, what happened with that particular process. If you'd like to find out more, please, please reach out to us or send an email. All right. Yeah. Thank so you. it would be the original committee. Um, thank you very much. Are there, uh, anybody else? Yes. Yanni Mendez. Are you here? I guess they're not here. So, hearing none, we'll move on to item number 16, the President's report. And uh, a couple things I wanted to, uh, to talk about. Um, you know, we're, we're, in a, we're in a horrible state of chaos in this country. I mean, school, it seems like almost every week that there are school shootings. It seems like there are almost every week that there, there are traumatic incidents, that there are, that, and, and we're dealing with, with those kinds of things. Um, one of the reality is that, and, and we're dealing with this political, I've done some consulting work in Florida and see the ridiculous political impact on school boards. I mean, they're actually talking about electing superintendents for, you know, with no education experience. So, so one of the things is that we need to begin to celebrate, and one of the things that's important to celebrate the good things that happen in the district. To be honest, I'm just kind of tired of people coming here and saying, well, this is wrong and that is wrong without celebrating excellence. You know, we're pointing out minutia. We as a board, we as a community, we have to rally, especially some folks that are running for office, we have to rally behind our district. We have to rally behind our community. Because many of our communities are, are under assault because of poverty, because of issues around crime, because of issues around drugs, because of other things. So if we as a community don't come together, we need to, we will not survive in the way that we could. You see the talent that our young people have. It's extraordinary. These folks are world beaters. They could do anything in the world. And just the diversity that they demonstrated, literally every, every, every corner of the world was, was in the languages that they had in the songs. We have these kids singing, you know, Irish songs. Where is the celebration of that? And so part of this thing that I said, and I'll reiterate what I said, is that the board meeting, everyone is free to speak. But if you want to make a change, it doesn't happen coming to a board meeting saying something that we've not heard before. It's important for us, we want to hear legitimate concerns. Let the superintendent know, let the principal know, let teachers know, so that we can come back and really adjust our consent agenda based on what we hear, when that's appropriate. But when people come here and the first thing they say is this is wrong and that is wrong and, and you said this and that, come on folks, we're in this together. And if you truly love New Brunswick, you're going to come here and you're going to start with some very, very positive things, not just jump right into the negative things. And so we are, have so much opportunity in this district. I'm all over the country working with districts around the country, and this board is more unified than other boards I've seen. We have one of the most amazing superintendents in the country. We have some of the incredible students in athletics, in the arts, in intellect. We have everything. We have beautiful schools. And so what I'm saying today and my message today is let's celebrate New Brunswick. Let's celebrate all the good that we have. 
Yeah, things are not perfect, and guess what? They'll never will be perfect. There will be mistakes. The other thing we need to realize is that much of our funding comes from the state of New Jersey, and because it comes from the state of New Jersey, they control some of the things that we do. We don't have complete autonomy to do everything we want to do as a board of direct, the board of, 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 uh, of education. So again, I want to remain positive. I want to support those people who are positive, you know, because it's very, very easy to be negative. Very easy to be negative. It's hard to be positive. It's hard to point out the good things. It's hard to support the good things. So I'm encouraging everyone, no matter where you are in this community, to really focus on the positive so that we can become the kind of school district, the kind of school district that, that, that we have the potential to be, and really to be a model not just for New Jersey, but for the nation in, in, in how we educate young people and how we really include, include parents and include community members. So that, that's my message, and it's just, uh, I'm just seeing so much negative in this society, and so I just had to say something to say, let's be positive. Let's really be positive. Let's be about New Brunswick. So with that, I'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Mr. General. Mr. Dorna. Yes. Mrs. Medina Hernandez. Yes, abstain on uh, letter H. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Yes. Mr. Spencer. Yes. Ms. Varela. Yes. Ms. Sevilla. Yes. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. Motion approved. Item number 18, the Finance Committee report. Who will take that? Mrs. Solis is in here this evening, as you know. Um, the Finance Report has the bills list and the check register for the month, the uh, Board Secretary and Treasurer's Report, and it also has the acceptance of the yearly audit, which included one finding and recommendation for improvement. Is there a motion to accept the finance report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Adorno. Yes, I'm staying on page 7 and 20. Mrs. Medina Hernandez. Yes, I'm staying on page 24 and 25. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Yes. Mr. Spencer. Ms. Varela. Yes. Ms. Sevilla. Yes. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Item number 19, the resolution for closed session. I will read the resolution and then we'll vote on it. Whereas the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 to 6, provides that certain matters of a public body may be discussed in closed session, and whereas the Board of Education intends to discuss matters as follows, one, personnel matters, two, matters of attorney-client privilege, now, therefore, be it resolved that the aforesaid subject shall be discussed in closed session by this Board of Education and administrative staff, and the minutes of said closed session discussion will be made available to the public when the reasons for the non-disclosure in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act no longer exist. Is there a motion? No. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Mr. General. Mr. Adorno. Yes. Mrs. Medina Hernandez. Yes. Mr. Ortiz. Yes. Mrs. Seawood. Yes. Mr. Spencer. Yes. Ms. Varela. Ms. Sevilla, yes. Dr. Caldwell. Yes. We are in closed session. Thank you all Thank you. very much.